Hey guys, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication and welcome to another video build log. In the last video, I showed you guys how I installed sound insulation materials into the trunk of the car that we're currently working on. Now we're actually gonna put all the sound insulating process on hold for right now, and we're gonna start fabricating. I just wanna let you guys know real quick that if you've come in in the middle of this build, you can actually go watch some of the previous videos and you'll be able to see all the future videos in a video playlist on our channel at youtube.com slash car audio fabrication. So what are we doing in this video? In this video, we're gonna be custom fabricating a battery rack. That's right, Excess Power was super cool and sent me an XP950 secondary battery that we're gonna be installing into the trunk of this vehicle. So in this video, we're gonna be focusing on how we actually install that into place within the vehicle. And in a future video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how we add a secondary battery. Not only that, we're gonna be actually planning out some of the position of our amplifiers along with our bit one processing unit. So let's get things underway with video build log number three, how to build a battery rack and plan our equipment locations. To begin planning out our trunk install, I start with creating a cardboard template of each different component of the install. These templates will allow me to move items around and test different locations without fear of damaging an item. This is a practice that you could adopt for subwoofers as well. You'd want to create a side profile view to test where they would fit within a vehicle. Here I'm also labeling where the power wires go along with the speaker and signal wires. This way I can plan out my wiring layout as well. Since the battery has much more height to it, I'm simply recording its dimensions. If I wanted to though, I could also make a fake box out of cardboard or even wood so that I don't have to move the heavy battery around. With the templates made for the Audison Bit 1, CT Sounds amps, and the excess power battery in place, I was able to start considering a layout. Sometimes though, you just have to start building to better determine where items are going to go. I want to point out that this vehicle does not have a spare tire. It has OEM upgraded brakes and the brakes are so large that normal spare tires do not fit, therefore no spare tires included. For this install though, I still want to use the factory mounting location on the bottom of the tub that normally holds a small air compressor. This will give us a good strong point to secure the battery rack. Here I've cut the cardboard into a circle shape with one of the sides cut off. This first circle serves as sort of a spacer. It allows me to put another circle on top that's larger so that I have more surface area for mounting to. Once again, I plan things out with cardboard first so I have a rough idea what I need to do with my wood. With a plan in place, I transfer the cardboard shape to a piece of wood and start rough cutting. Next, I use template tape to stick a Mobile Solution Smart template to my shape. This template allows me to use a flush trim bit on a router in order to create the perfect shape. In order to save weight, I use the same process in order to remove some inside material from the bottom ring. Before we get too crazy with additional router work, we want to make sure that each of our pieces fits well. In this case, I'm pretty satisfied with how well this is going to work as a base. And no, my inspiration for that shape was not a toilet seat. Let's move forward with doing some additional router work. I'm adding a deep chamfer onto the inside and outside perimeter. This gives the piece a little bit more of a finished look and it also matches up better with the contour of the vehicle. If you'd like to learn more about chamfer router bits, be sure to check out the video link on screen. To give you guys a better idea about how this is mounting into the vehicle, here's the OEM bolt that I told you about earlier. I made this here dash garn hole in this assembly in order to bolt it in. Not really sure why I just did an accent. With more of an established foundation in place, I was able to start deciding where I'm going to mount my Excess Power XP950 battery. This battery is a secondary battery that we'll be using to improve the electrical of our system. If you're not a subscriber already, be sure to subscribe in order to be notified of a future video when I explain how to add a secondary battery the correct, safe way. Here I'm planning out exactly where I want to put my wiring distribution block along with the Bit 1. At this point, I actually thought that I was going to mount the bit one down in this location, but later on I'll change my mind, just so that you guys are aware. Since I do know that this is where I want the battery to be mounted, I started cutting these various different sizes of wood that will box in the battery. Notice that I'm leaving access to the terminals and that the battery is actually mounted on its side. This is a nice design characteristic of the Excess Power AGM style batteries. Flexibility for our layout is always very valuable. 
After fastening the battery box together using brad nails and wood glue, I've put it into place one more time to be sure that I'm happy with the location. You can see here that I've added 45 degree chamfers to all sides of the box just to give it that finished look. A quick pro tip would be to make sure you leave a lot of room around the terminals. I didn't leave as much room as I wish I would have, but luckily it still worked out. Make sure you consider little things like this when you do your build. I removed the assembly from the vehicle and used plenty of wood glue along with wood screws to secure the battery box into position. This is just one of the many ways that you could actually tackle this build, but I like that everything is based off using an existing fastener. The battery rack assembly is looking really good, so now it's time for paint and some carpet. Since this is just a small carpet job, I'm using some spray glue. What I'm actually doing here is lining the inside of the battery box so that the battery doesn't get scratched by the wood. This will also help to prevent some of the transfer of vibrations into the battery. After trimming the carpet, it looks pretty good, but we still have some of these fuzzies along the side. I want to show you a cool trick. If we take a heat gun and quickly run it along this edge, it will actually shrink those fuzzies. This is a good little trick to use on subwoofer box carpet seams as well. With the carpet now masked off, I'm going to start spraying some paint. I'm using a high build flat black paint. This works good on MDF to seal up the surfaces and actually gives a pretty good finish, but you could also consider using bed liner paint. While the paint was drying, I went to the hardware store and I picked out this bolt that matches the OEM bolt. I fitted this small metal bracket to it which keeps it from rotating and then put it into the OEM slot. Finally, I installed the completed battery rack by placing it atop the new bolt and then applying a washer and a nut. To finish things up, I placed the battery into position. So what do you guys think? Please keep in mind that one of the things that really motivates me to make these videos is hearing your guys' comments, so please drop me one down below. Is there anything that you would have done differently? Or are any of the things that were shown here something that you plan to do in the future? Also, if you enjoyed this video, if you could slam that like button, that would really be appreciated as well. Thank you. Be sure to subscribe and tune in for the next video where I'll be showing you guys how I built this flip up amp rack. Thank you guys for watching this video and supporting free car audio tutorial content. I really appreciate you guys watching these videos. It means a lot to me. I love doing this and I love teaching you guys. And I love spreading this message and building our community. So the more you guys can communicate with me down there, that would be awesome. I just want us to grow closer together in, in a non-weird way. As always, a special thanks goes out to all my Patreon supporters, Emmanuel, Nathan, Rory, Andrew, Eddie, Eric, Richard, Mark, Truman, Jerry, and all the other Patreon supporters. Thank you guys. If you guys would like to check out Patreon, go ahead and click the link down below. And if you're new to the channel and you would like to be subscribed for more free car audio content, be sure to click the subscribe button up above. Thank you once again for watching. In the next video, build log video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how we build that lift up amp rack. So stay tuned.